boxes of meeting um, uh, that definition. Now in this instance, if we found that they, or we had uh, uh, enough information to suspect that they didn't meet that criteria, that's the condition that we could enforce against. Now that would probably go to appeal, and at which point uh, it would be a public inquiry and they would put forward their evidence in detail and it would be considered um, there and that would be on oath. So, so that's the way it, it, it would play out. But essentially that condition to, to meet that criteria is, is essentially the clause which ensures that um, they meet that national criteria. But in order to get to this stage this evening, we haven't gone through that process on the, the applicants parents that want to use the other pitch? No, we've not got, gone into that detail, uh, and the reason being that if it wasn't the Giles's um, um, requesting this, this consent, this variation, if it was any other person, um, we would be looking at the, 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 the proposal in front of us, not their circumstances. And it's because the officers, and as we've looked at it, the harms don't outweigh um, the, the negatives, the, their, their personal circumstances haven't come into it. I think it must be very difficult for these residents because if you live in Hurst, you know that that floods. Every year. Yeah. And it it floods, year. and you, you know, I get phone calls. You know, I'm not, I'm not making it up. I get phone calls. I have Eddie Napper out there with me down on that junction where it does flood. and. I just think it's amazing that we haven't taken that into account. But I'll let other people have a have a say and then I'll come back. Well, can you just comment on that again, please? Yeah, I mean, I mean mm -hmm. there's no denying it takes place. However, the, the <laughs> it's going back to the original consent and the original reasons for granting consent. Um, and it was very much a case of that the conditions in there and what was proposed wouldn't have a risk to the occupants. In the same way as people who elsewhere, they may not be able to travel along the road, they may have issues uh, or not in, in their homes from the flooding, but in terms of the risk to, to them occupying the site to endanger to them, uh, it only occur, occurs once they, they leave the site, and that's why there was a condition to do with uh, how they, uh, 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 basically a flood risk plan should, should uh, that event occur. Well, Angus, next time, please. <coughs> Jim, three questions. Um, this is an application to vary conditions, and yet it includes the provision of a new stable block. Um, surely that new stable block in itself should require planning permission. Uh, it's big enough, surely, uh, in the countryside. Second question is, um, is the robust ability to enforce whether a caravan is a static one or a touring one or the use of it. Uh, third question is, could this, if we were minded to, this uh, condition for going from two caravans to four be conditional on the particular family that are there at this time in the Jameses? Um, first of all, the stable, no, uh, essentially the, the original consent allowed for a stable and this, uh, through the variation, it would also allow for a stable that is uh, the location and design from the approved plans that's to be considered. So the variation, uh, part of considering um, the variation to the condition on approved plans, that all the, all the issues relating to the, uh, the stable's relocation and different size that have been taken into consideration on the, on the impact. So. Um, it's not new development as such, it's just replacement um, in one sense. Do you want to come back to that? Or... If, if, if I might please, surely it is in a different place and it's bigger, so surely that requires planning. Um, through a variation you are essentially um, issuing new consent in a way. Um, I, I do understand what you're saying, but it's, because the the, um, the the change in location is considered through the variation, so the harms associated with its uh, the different design, its location, have been considered in exactly the same way as it would be if it was a new application. So, if it was uh, the introduction of um, 
uh, a second stable, for instance, you have to, yes, that would be considered new development, but in this instance, because it's one for one, it's not. Um, in terms of the static caravan, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I understand that there are caravan licenses and there, there's, there's definitions within that. Um, yes, the, the existing um, car static there is large, it does look permanent, but uh, it, it's on a uh, brick skirt underneath, it, is, it, it would be considered a temporary um, removable structure. Uh, and the final one, to condition on the family, no, that's, that's not something um, I would recommend going down the line of the, the, the inspector's findings found that the site was acceptable without the need for considering uh, the personal circumstances in it being a named occupant, uh, and that that, that there is um, uh, a lot of strength in the national policy, the planning policy for travel sites, that personal circumstances and named conditions uh, are only there um, if there is significant harm uh, to a site, and that's the only way of making it acceptable. But that that's not been the case, and the, the findings of the inspector. Uh, thank you. I, I still don't understand the bad statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, to, to, they're allowed to build uh, the stable from the previous application. Yeah. What is it to make sure, if this was approved, that the original stable isn't there and only this second one? Yeah, uh, I mean, what we could do is we could put an uh, additional condition to say that um, the replacement stable is not uh, uh, erected or uh, the occupation of the new static caravan um, does not take place until the removal uh, of the first stable or the existing one. Angus, did you, did you think that was a. I still don't, don't think it addresses the, the, the one for, for planning permission for a larger statement, but uh, I'll, I'll be advised. Okay. Who else would like to? Chris? No, sorry, I've got about the stables. If, I, if I've got a plot of land and I get planning permission to build the house on it, I can't knock the house down there and build it somewhere else on the same plot, can I? I need to get planning permission. What's the difference between a stable and a house? Uh, what you might have is a variation in uh, conditions to uh, the approved plans which might relocate the house within the plot and all the material considerations as in does it change the, the ability to access the site, does, does there a greater impact on neighbourhood amenity and things like that. So th there, there are, the variation of conditions can cover that. Nobody else wants to speak, no I'll come to you Wayne if nobody else wants to. Um, I'm confused about this. <laughs> because this is the first time I've heard that you could almost put a stables next to your house and then if you did like it there, you could vary the application and put it at the front of your house. You know, I mean, when do we take into account building line, um, the street scene, etc.? I'm with Angus. I just don't get it. I mean, you would take all those considerations in as part of the variation of conditions. You are almost looking at it like a new uh, application. The difference is the principle of development is already been considered acceptable. It's just that the, the change of the location, you would consider the harms associated with that. Yeah. Okay. Anybody, anybody else wish to ask any questions? Why would you indicate it again? Still it. <laughs> if you got planning permission for X and you put Y in that was 50% bigger than X and you move it, that would be a fresh planning application. Um, yeah. Yes. 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 Please. You, what, you, what you'd have is, for instance, um, an application for a house, yeah, absolutely accepted. Um, within the application, you are judging uh, all of the considerations that we ordinarily would, uh, including the principle of development, the impact of that development in a specific location and its design, etc., on the neighbours, countryside, everything, etc., etc., as we know. If you had a variation of conditions application which came in and sort of said, okay, we want to move the building so far this way you would consider what that move would have. You wouldn't consider the principle of development as such, but you would consider the, the, the from fresh, the, the building in a new location. Um, 
if the proposal is materially different in principle, that's when you need a whole new fresh application. Uh, and that can include things like uh, going from three bed to four bed, that kind of thing. Three, three bed to four bed, or small stable to big stable. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just have some sense here? Yeah. 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 Is nobody else indicating to speak? No? Okay. Right. The, uh, the recommendation then is set out on page 118. Excuse me. I would like to put in a, sorry, I would like to propose a counter. I, I don't accept that point. Sorry, Daniel. I think it's um, intensification. It, it is going against CP11. I think it is detrimental on the street scene. I think it is unsustainable. And I think we have a flooding issue. But I will go with intensification on the street scene against CP11. That would be that would be what I would like to put forward if I get a second up. I'll second. Okay, I'll we'll second it for that. Right, so yes, uh, Councillor John Jarvis has seconded that. Right, could we have some comments then on the um, intensification from the officers and now open it up to members to see what they think? Um, yeah, I mean, as I've, as I've set out originally, that it is accepted there is an intensification of use. And it is both in the build form and the, the amount of use going on on the site from all people. Um, but it, it, going specifically to the issue and that impact on the street scene, the character of the area, it, it, it has been assessed. Um, we officers feel and landscape and trees feel that the harm associated with which we accept there would be from new build form and more people on the site could be mitigated through a good landscaping scheme of additional vertical planting, etc., to break up uh, the appearance from those views from uh, Nelson's Lane and that gap in, in uh, uh, the, the, the hedge where the, the gate is and just to the right of that. Sorry. Um. Would anybody else like to, to talk on? Chris? Just a clarification. Wait, intensification due to the, the uh, extra caravan or the stable or both? Both. The extra pitch and the stable, the increase in the stable and the positioning of the stable. The resizing position. Intensification to cover an umbrella to cover those. Can you just come back to me. Can you tell me how it is harming the street scene? Just so I'm absolutely clear what I'm voting for. Well, you all didn't go there on Friday, but you. This is a very rural location, um, and if you take this over, this location in isolation, it's it's a very rural location. I, I understand what the inspector has said, but if you want to walk to the school, that's 25 minutes plus. We have one shop, and that's probably 20, well, say 25 minutes to both. So we haven't got amenities. You have to have a car. And living in that spot, you have to have a 4x4 four four because it floods. And it will affect the street scene because you are building right up to the line, stables. There's nothing else on that corner, that area, where you've built right up to the, to the, the roadside. So I regard that as detrimental on the street scene and the massive and the massive and the intensification when you add that to the pitch overall that's where I get my massive Absolutely. intensification. And how many people are live there? I'll just come back to the office again. I did thought I heard you say that with this um, scheme there was going to be betterment on the landscaping. Yeah, there's the condition uh, 13, I think, which was put in to ensure that a landscaping condition mitigates against those harms. That's the purpose of it. Um, absolutely accept that you're saying that there is the harms that you're saying. I think the, the difference between um, Councillor Smith and, and officers is, is uh, the level of harm that that, that creates. Uh, and the officer's view is that the condition through the landscaping scheme would mitigate those harms. 
Yeah. 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 I'm just going to ask um, Justin to actually read out what I think the uh, what's been proposed, just so we're all clear. Right. Let me know if I'm going wrong. Well, I think mean, you've got the intensification due to the increase in pitches and the, the sighting of the stables um, causing harm to the street scene for the reason of its uh, sighting and massing and uh, rural location. I guess, sorry, you said reciting of the stable. I think we also did include the, the increased size of it as well. Yeah. Councillor Jarvis has seconded it. Mm. Again, that's fact, isn't it? You've seconded it. I oh, have, yes. Yes, that's fine. Oh, yes. Right. Did you? So, we've all heard the, the proposal then. We now need to vote on it. So, all those in favour of that proposal, please show. We have five, six in favour of that. And those against? Three. So that proposal by um, Councillor Wayne Smith, Councillor Wayne Smith, is carried. That application is refused. So why do you wait? Uh,